starting workshop three, so it's just a new workshop. Um, kind of to get into this, we are going to watch a video. Okay. Um, so if we actually, uh, when, all right, sorry, why don't we flip back to page 122 really quick because you guys can just look at the pictures. We're not going to read anything on there. Okay. Just flip back to page just so you can kind of see the pictures. Yeah. So I just, now just flip back a page to 122. Like this page right here? Um, yeah, so it just kind of looks like this. Okay. So, looks like these two pages. Sorry, I kind of skipped over this. Um, so today we're going to be starting a new workshop. Over the next few weeks, we're going to learn about basic rights guaranteed to all freedoms. Or sorry, guaranteed to all Americans. My bad. Um, so the title of this workshop is called It's Your Right. Okay? Um, based on the title of the text, what kind of rights do you think we're going to learn about? Jack? Jack? Okay. What kind of rights do you think we're going to learn about, we can learn about in this unit? What kind of rights do you guys get in America? You get to choose. Okay, headphones out. Yep, that is a choice. You get to choose to do what, though? You get to choose to do a lot of things. Okay, so you get the right to vote. So most people get the right to vote. So that's one thing. I, we might talk about voting. What about, what are some other rights we get here? Headphone out, Dylan, and, and tell us your answer. Thanks for raising your hand. Freedom of speech. Freedom of speech, yeah. So that's a really good one. John, I saw you raise your hand. What's another one? Freedom of press. So that'd be um, similar to freedom of speech, but that's kind of like freedom of basically tell whatever you want to whoever you want. Okay. Alex, and then back to Dylan. So freedom to open carry. To open carry, so well, okay, so that. Right to open carry, pretty much. Okay, so. You mean that, carry? So, yeah, so Second Unless Amendment. You get the license. Yeah, so I mean, you don't have a right to openly carry. You have a right to own a firearm. That's different, so bearing. I guess it depends on your definition of bearing. You can't just like. You can't really just walk around the street <laughs> with a shotgun in your hand. It, it depends See, on that's where. That's the thing. They have rules on it. Like, it depends on everything you can open carry. It depends on where you live, in which yeah. state. So every state's a little every different. Um, Utah, yeah, it's a little more lenient than others, but yeah, not every state you can. Yeah. Um, I have right to a free trial or a fair trial or something like that. Oh, uh, right. Okay, right to a it's so right to a fair and speedy trial. So that means that if you ever get com or get arrested for a crime, um, and you want to get a trial, like a jury trial, you have a right to that. Okay, or you can choose to not do a jury trial. Okay, so those are all really good ones. So oh, Dylan got one more. Pretty sure he's right to bear arms. So he said that. Yeah. So right to bear arms. So that's kind of. <laughs> So the, that one is a little more, it's different because in every state it's a little different. So it's like you have a right, everyone has the right to own guns in America unless you have a criminal record. And then there's different, so there's different state laws about like ways you can possess them. So like in Utah and other states you can openly carry in some states you have to get permits for that. So there's just different laws. So. Yes, it is a right, but there's different laws that go along with that right. Yeah. So all really good ones. I'm just going to kind of read the example or the description up here on this page. So this is something else. So the Constitution explains the way our government works. Raise your hand if you ever heard of the Constitution before. Okay, most of us, or hopefully all of us. Okay. The Bill of Rights gives all U.S. citizens certain rights. Both documents are more than 200 years old, but they remain relevant today. Okay, so even though it's been a couple hundred years since they've been written, we still follow them today. Okay, so let's flip back to page 124 now. What we're going to do really quick is we're going to go over the vocab words on page 124. So yeah, flip to page 124 really quick, Marty. Appreciate being ready to go. Thanks for being ready to go over here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go over page one really quick. We're just going to go over the words, and then I've got a little video I'm going to show you. And then we're going to fill out the blank kind of goes along with the video. So here's what I want to do. Follow along. We're just going to go over the words. The first word is amend. What's that word, everybody? Amen. Yeah, thanks for repeating us. Let's just say it one more time. The word's amend. What's that word, everyone? Amen. Thank you. Appreciate you saying that with me. So amend would be to change. 
So if I change something, be a men. Okay. The next one is Bill of Rights. What's that term, everybody? Bill of Rights. Oh my goodness, thank you most of you. I didn't hear everybody. What's that term? I want to hear everybody say, what's that term? Bill of Rights. What is it? Bill of Rights. Thank you for following along. There's a Bill of Rights. So again, just what they said, it's um, basically a list of things that you have the right to have in America. Okay. Um, the next word is constitution. What's that word, everybody? Constitution. Hey, thanks for most everyone saying it. I want to hear everybody say the words constitution. What's that word? Constitution. constitution. Okay, I appreciate you saying it nice and loud. So constitution, again, that's uh, one of the founding documents of kind of American freedom, if you will. Um, and then the next one says so James Madison. So say that name with me. The name is James Madison. What's that name, everybody? James Madison. Good. Yeah, appreciate you saying that with me. So James Madison, he was one of the founding fathers, uh, or one of the people that probably helped write the Constitution, and he has been a, I think he was a president, right? Okay. And then the last word over there, the word is ratify. What's that word, everybody? Ratify. Hey, you guys are doing awesome, killing it on the vocab this afternoon. The word is ratify. One more time, that was that word, everybody? Ratify. Okay, I appreciate that. So ratify would, I'll, would basically to be, um, it's kind of like amend, but it'd be to make like a permanent um, update, basically. I don't know, we'll, we'll learn a little bit more about that. Right, so here's what I want you to do. We're just going to watch this video, follow along. If there's any words, you can fill in the blank as we go. Great. If not, no worries. We're going to go over after together. So. The first 10 amendments. Everyone just watch the video. Oh, In 1787. America was a new nation that had recently won its independence from Great Britain. The Founding Fathers wrote the Constitution to create a new government. It was then sent to all 13 states to ratify or approve. The new Constitution created a strong central government. <gasps> Some leaders worried that it did not protect individual freedoms. But at this stage, no state could amend or change the Constitution. Each one could only say yes or no. By 1790, all 13 states had ratified the Constitution. During this time, James Madison was working on a Bill of Rights designed to protect the freedoms of individual citizens. Eventually, states approved 10 amendments that changed the Constitution. All 10 amendments in the Bill of Rights are framed as limits on the central government. They're nearly all written in negative terms. Congress shall make no law. Congress shall not. Instead of making promises, they set boundaries. Right at the start, the First Amendment includes five freedoms. Freedom of religion, speech, press, assembly, and petition. Next comes the Second Amendment, with its well-regulated militia or the right to keep and bear arms. The Third Amendment is entirely devoted to protecting you from having government troops take up residence in your home. Can you imagine having soldiers coming in to raid your refrigerator at 3 in the morning? The Fourth Amendment secures our freedom from unreasonable search and seizure. The fifth protects you from being tried twice for the same charge or from being forced to testify against yourself. That's the familiar right to remain silent, the one we invoke when we plead the fifth. The sixth amendment ensures a fair trial in criminal cases, speedy and public and with a lawyer. The seventh guarantees a jury trial in many civil cases. The eighth amendment protects against cruel and unusual punishment. Of course, what's cruel and what's unusual is left for the courts to decide. To ensure nothing is left out, the Ninth Amendment declares that just because certain rights aren't listed here, it doesn't mean that new rights can't be added. And the Tenth Amendment says that any powers not specifically given to the government in the Constitution are reserved to the states and to the people. To the founding generation of Americans, the greatest threat to individual liberty was the governments they were creating. So even as they created it, they limited its powers. For hundreds of years now, Americans have continued to passionately debate the freedoms protected by the Bill of Rights. What's remarkable 
is that it has stayed intact as the cornerstone of democracy in the United States for more than 200 years. the video but I was going to kind of introduce the, the outline for you um, and then as we're going to rewatch it you're going to kind of fill out the best you possibly can on the next round okay as you're going to be thinking about um, one like some facts that you can learn so we're going to write about that on the next page okay so we just take a look at the first sentence so it says after gaining its independence in 1787 the United States needed a new government the founding fathers wrote the, okay, and it was, would be a blank, but has constitution in here, which created a strong central government. Okay. I know that the word constitution makes sense because the video showed that this was a document the founding fathers wrote. Okay. So I want you guys, oh, okay, as we watch the video, to fill in the next four blanks the best as possible. So we've already used constitution. Okay, so we basically got amend, bill of rights, James Madison, and ratify. So as a little reminder, the difference between amend and ratify, amend is to change, um, ratify is to basically like, okay, like say, oh, give consent, okay, okay. All right. So watch the video again, fill in the blanks, and then we will just go over the answers and then we'll be done with the group for that. The first 10 amendments. I want you to be filling in the blanks as the video goes. In 1787, America was a new nation that had recently won its independence from Great Britain. The founding fathers wrote the constitution to create a new government. It was then sent to all 13 states to ratify or approve. The new constitution created a strong central government. Some leaders worried that it did not protect individual freedoms. But at this stage, no state could amend or change the Constitution. Each one could only say yes or no. By 1790, all 13 states had ratified the Constitution. During this time, James Madison was working on a Bill of Rights designed to protect the freedoms of individual citizens. Eventually, states approved 10 amendments that changed the Constitution. All 10 amendments in the Bill of Rights are framed as limits on the central government. They're nearly all written in negative terms. Congress shall make no law. Congress shall not. Instead of making promises, they set boundaries. Right at the start, the First Amendment includes five freedoms. Freedom of religion, speech, press, assembly, and petition. Next comes the Second Amendment, with its well-regulated militia or the right to keep and bear arms. The Third Amendment is entirely devoted to protecting you from having government troops take up residence in your home. Can you imagine having soldiers coming in to raid your refrigerator at three in the morning? <laughs> the Fourth Amendment. So that's something to think about, the countries in the world that Amendment secures our freedom from unreasonable search and seizure. The fifth protects you from being tried twice for the same charge or from being forced to testify against yourself. That's the familiar right to remain silent, the one we invoke when we plead the fifth. The sixth amendment ensures a fair trial in criminal cases, speedy and public and with a lawyer. The seventh guarantees a jury trial in many civil cases. The Eighth Amendment protects against cruel and unusual punishment. Of course, what's cruel and what's unusual is left for the courts to decide. To ensure nothing is left out, the Ninth Amendment declares that just because certain rights aren't listed here, it doesn't mean that new rights can't be added. And the Tenth Amendment says that any powers not specifically given to the government in the Constitution are reserved to the states and to the people. To the founding generation of Americans, the greatest threat to individual liberty was the governance they were creating. So even as they created it, they limited its powers. For hundreds of years now, Americans have continued to passionately debate the freedoms protected by the Bill of Rights. What's remarkable 
is that it has stayed intact as the cornerstone of democracy in the United States for more than 200 years. Wow. All right. Hey, everyone, appreciate you guys paying attention. Nice and quiet there. Have your phones put away. Thank you so much. All right, so... The first ten, an amendment. <laughs> Um, yeah, will you, uh, will you get out of there for a minute? In 1787, America was a new nation that had recently won its independence. Just close this window, yeah. Yeah, just close that one out. Just one out. Uh, okay, we're good. Alright, okay. So, we're just going to go through this quick, fill out the blanks. So, we already went through A, the founding fathers wrote the constitution which created a strong central government. So B, states could not blank the original constitution, they could only say yes or no to the entire document. So what do you think, what is it? It's, they couldn't do what? Dylan, take that out of your ear. What is it, Alicia? Um, is it D? Yeah, um, M, A, Amendment. Okay, so in this case, so it's really close to that, so it's going to be ratified. Ratified. Okay, oh. so it's, yeah, like I said, amend and ratify are like very similar, and they could no, be technically. That's not right. <laughs> it's, no. it's not right. <laughs> yeah, so we're just going to go with it. Okay, so that's states so cannot nice. ratify the original constitution, and they can only say yes to the entire document. Okay. And then C. Okay, so all 13 states. Oh, okay, all right. They must. All right. They have All right. I'll go with that because they have. They must just have it wrong. In there, I yeah. that would be that. Right. So, but 13 states had to amend it. Yeah, they couldn't amend it. They couldn't change it. So all they could do is say okay. yes or no. So, I so, uh, yeah. so it is ratified. Mm. They can only say yes or no. Ratified. They couldn't change oh, so it's it. Ratified. It's ratified. It's amended. Only dice. Okay. So yeah. they could not ratify okay, the original okay. okay. constitution. They can only say yes or no. Okay. All 13 decided to amend I don't know. Let's go, let's go with the book. <laughs> the book's right. That's what the book's saying. The problem is, they throw words out here sometimes. Because then that would mean if you were to change it out, it would be states could not approve the original Okay, let's take a look at number two. So, some people worried that the Constitution did not protect individual freedoms. So, who wrote amendments that protected freedoms of individual people? Amendments. Who, well, somebody wrote them. There's only one name on the list. Who is that name? James, James Madison. James Good. James okay. So he's just somebody that wrote them. So if you don't have it, let's just write it down. So we got James Madison. Okay. The amendments set boundaries on the central governments by stating action, actions that Congress is not allowed to take. So remember, it said that all of the terms were in negative. So it said, they shall not, they cannot do this. Okay, so it kind of like sets boundaries instead of saying, this is the limit, they say this is what they can't do. Okay, Alex, you getting those written down? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right, the next one. The first 10 amendments are called the what? The last word that we don't have up there it is the, what is it, Nikaeli? Bill of Rights. Oh, thanks, Jack. Okay, Bill of Rights, good. Okay. So if you don't have it, let's get a Bill of Rights written, right? Oh, oh that's way off. Okay. Oh. <laughs> it was started close and got further a little more. So Bill of Rights goes in that last one there. Okay, so those are the first ten amendments. Okay, the amendments include freedom of speech, right to trial by jury. People still debate Bill of Rights, what they protect. Okay, but it has been a cornerstone of democracy of our democracy for 200 years. 
And so there's still stuff that they debate all the time. In your lifetime, there's been many things that have been debated within the Bill of Rights. Big things that are happening um, in the last 10 years and probably in the next 10 years are rights for people of, you know, LGBTQ, yep, all of that stuff. Okay, so all that stuff has been evolving, but things like that haven't changed just very recently and are changing. So just kind of be heads up on that. Uh, last thing, last thing we're going to do before we put our book away. So actually, I didn't have you guys write this down, so. We're just going to go ahead and put our books away. Okay. Why don't you go ahead and put your books away?